So getting started in today's lesson, we're going to review what we did yesterday, or review. So what we, w what we did yesterday was essentially identify the similar triangles in the diagram, then sketch them so that the corresponding sides and angles have the same orientation. Now, regardless of whether you were here yesterday or not, I really want to reaffirm, you really want to do this in a specific order. You want all of your triangles to look the same. I'm going to start off with the big triangle. Always start with the big triangle. Again, do this first. All I'm going to do is I'm going to outline my big triangle here, which is LMN, or sorry, LMK. And what I'm essentially going to do is I'm going to copy it and paste it over. So I'm going to draw another giant triangle like this over here, kind of like this. L is here, M is up here, K is here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it to look very similar. In fact, we want it to look as identical as possible to this triangle here. Now what we have are two other similar triangles. We have the left triangle, which I'll do in blue, here. And then we have the right triangle, which I'll do in green. I'll start with the left. Everything that we want, we want both of these triangles, the left and the right, to look exactly like this. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to draw two smaller triangles that look exactly like that. So straight line on the bottom, come at, at an angle then come down. It's going to look exactly like that. There's the blue, and then I'll do the same thing here over with the green. I want them to look almost exactly like this big red triangle up here. Now, we want to make sure that we put the letters in the right place. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to look at this blue one, and I'm going to come up here. From yesterday, we found that our focal point will be the right angle. Let's start with the right angle. Blue triangle here, where is my right angle? My right angle is at N. So that means that N will go at the top here. If that's going to be my focal point, all I have to think about is maybe if you want to focus on the long side, focus on the long side. Check this out. I'm going to look at this long side here. N goes to where from the long side? I'll look back up here. Which is longer, NM or NL? NL is longer. That means that L is going to come here, and M is going to go there. NL is the long side, and M is the shorter side. So that tells me where I can put those. We are going to do exactly the same thing, but with the green triangle. And the neat little trick here, although you won't be able to see it as well, is that the right angle for the green triangle is right next to the right angle for the blue triangle. Right in here. Let me do this. It's going to be right in here. So the right angle for the green triangle is pretty much the same as the right angle for the blue triangle. It's going to be N. Now looking at this shape, again, we have a longer side and we have a shorter side. It's kind of like a geographical map. We want to find out which is the longer. So from N, which is longer, N to M or N to K? Which is longer, N to M or N to K? Should be N to M. N to M is the longer side in this green triangle up here. After that, N to K is the shorter. And we have our three triangles. Now yesterday in class, we wrote down a similarity statement. We said something like triangle LMK is similar to triangle LNM, and that's similar to triangle MNK. I'm not worried about the similarity statement. I'm worried about your ability to redraw these triangles based on that focal point, the right angle. You just have to pick, uh, you don't even actually have to pick, you just have to focus on that right angle and that should tell you everything. 
But like I mentioned earlier, our goal for today is to apply this drawing, this skill, in order to solve for missing sides. The biggest thing that I've thrown in here to try to help you out is this box here, and I'm going to circle it. These are all the steps you need. I know that math gets hard sometimes, we don't always have the same steps, but these are the steps that outline the process for what we'll do today. Notice step one, sketch triangles so that the corresponding sides and angles have the same orientation. That's what we just did. Sketching the triangles so that they look the same. That's step one. That's what we did yesterday, that's what we just did in our do now. Steps two and three were adding, but you're gonna find that step two is just it's a small thing. Maybe for some of you it might be a big thing. We'll try to get there. But step three, set up a proportion and solve. We did that a lot in chapter eight. So we're doing it again. Let me show you how this is done. The first thing that I'm going to do, if we're going to find the value of x, I am going to, yes? I do, yes. Mm -hmm. That's fine. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is that step one. I am going to redraw the triangles so that they look exactly the same. First things first, the big triangle. I'm going to draw this as smoothly and as small as I can, but I'm still going to fit it. So I have this big red triangle here. And the right angle is in the bottom right, so it's going to look like this. Long side goes up, comes over like this. X z y that's my big triangle next I'm gonna do the right triangle and I'm going to do exactly the same thing I want this triangle to look exactly like that red triangle that I just drew so draw it in the exact same manner long side on the bottom comes up at the right angle diagonal now I need to find the right angle of this blue triangle, which is the left one. Let's see, where's the, right where's the right angle in the blue? It's up here at W. So W is gonna be the right angle of my blue triangle. And then once again, it just looks like from W, we have a longer side and we have a shorter side. In fact, I'm gonna use my marker so that we have a longer side here and we have a shorter side here. So if I look at the blue triangle and I focus on W, which is longer, W to X or W to Z? W to X is the longer side. So from W, that's going to go out to X, meaning that that other point, Z, goes at the top. Last but not least, I'll draw the right triangle, which again, Similar triangle, so you want it to look exactly the same. These should all look like a bunch of right triangles. One, they're just progressively getting smaller. Now that green triangle is all the way up in here. It's super small. But I'm still looking for the right angle, and that right angle is next to, ah, W. The right angle of my green triangle is still up here by W. So that right angle is W. Again, which is longer, WY or WZ? Well, you're going to say WZ, of course. So WZ is the longer side, and then W to Y is the shorter side. All right, so this is exactly what we did. Who said we were done yet? We're not done with this problem. Flip that back over. We're solving for x, ladies and gentlemen. We're not done yet. This is exactly what we did yesterday, but now we need to take it a step further. That's where we do step two, add in the side lengths. Check this out. In the big triangle, watch this, I'm gonna erase all of this. In the big triangle, if I take these side lengths exactly, I'm just gonna copy them over. 25 is gonna go up here, 24 goes here, and seven goes here. Now what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to place everything else where it goes. Now this is the more difficult part. 
This is the part where you really have to start thinking critically. This 25 is going to basically disappear. If I do the blue triangle, again, let me highlight that blue triangle real quick so we can see what we're working with. I can see that I have two known things. I don't, I don't really know xw. 25 is the whole thing, but that just goes away. Um, let's see. I don't know xw, but I do know xz. 24 should go in between x and z. So 24 is going to go right here. And then look where x is. x is in between w and z. So x is going to go here. We can do exactly the same thing with the green. Look at the green here. Uh, I have x here, and x on the green is in between w and z. So that means that x goes down here. And then 7 is in between y and z, which means 7 goes up here. The neat thing about this is what we've just done. We've actually just created a bunch of similar triangles. All I have to do now is set up a proportion and solve. Now to do this, all I'm going to do is use this left triangle here and compare it back to the big. We're trying to find the value of x, right? Check this out. We're trying to find x. And if we work this back over to the big triangle here, what side does x correspond to? 7. x corresponds to 7. And the only other side I have in the blue is 24. 24 is here. What side does that correspond to? 25. So we use the drawing, the resketching that we did yesterday in order to set up a proportion. Now that I have a proportion, I can cross multiply and solve. Just when you thought we were done, it comes back. So 25 times x is equal to 7 times 24, 168. And just like we've done time and time again, divide both sides by 25, we'll figure out what x should be. Let's see here, 168 divided by 25, 6.7. Perfect. This problem is a longer problem. That's why we're not going to see a whole lot of them. But you are still going to see them. You're going to see them on the exit ticket. You're going to see them on the quiz tomorrow. You will see them on the chapter test. Why? because it's all about picking out your similar triangles in a right triangle and solving for x. This is what math in high school is all about, problem solving. There's multiple steps to this one. Ready for the next page? Recall the steps. We want to find the value of x. To do that, we have three steps. First of all, draw our triangles so that the corresponding angles and sides match up. Then we want to add in the side lengths. Then we want to set up a proportion and solve. First thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to have some fun with this. Check this out. I like this triangle. It's a little bit nicer for us. I'm going to copy over the big triangle. See, all I'm doing is just bringing this over. Now, one thing that you can do if you want, you can actually draw the red triangle and then bring over the side lengths as they are. Look at this. Look at this. I have 12 here, so 12 can go here. I have 16 in between S and R, so 16 will go here. And I have 20 from Q to R. So now I'm actually doing step one and step two at the same time. I'm redrawing my triangles and bringing over the side lengths. Maybe this will be easier. 
Next, I'm going to do the left triangle, which I'll do in blue. The left triangle is this triangle up here. Now, despite the fact that I don't have a right angle, that right angle will be right here. This triangle still needs to be drawn, just like we drew the last triangle, like this. We still want this triangle, we still want this left triangle to be drawn exactly like we drew over here. That way the corresponding sides line up perfectly. Now we need to figure out where everything goes. Well, where's the right angle here? T. So T is going to go in the bottom. Check this out. This part is a little bit difficult, but if we actually look at the problem, we can figure it out. On the red right triangle, sorry, on the big red triangle, you have a shorter side here with 12, and you have a longer side 16. That's going to carry over. So from T, this is going to be the shorter side here. And then from T out to the right, this is going to be the longer side. So what I need to do is look at this problem and think to myself, which one's going to be the longer side? Is the longer side here from S to T? Or is it from T to Q? Well, it, T, S. I agree. I agree. Looking at this diagram, it looks like T, S is the longer side. So T, S will go on the bottom here. That's the longer side. So T, S. That can only mean from T, you're going to go to Q next. So Q will go at the top. What's nice about this problem is we just told ourselves what we needed. TS is the longer side. That has X. So X is going to go down here with TS. And then the 12 here on QS, that's just across from the right angle. So 12 goes up here. Now I just need to draw the right triangle. <clears throat> Again. The right triangle should look exactly like our previous triangles. So that may be better. Now, looking at my green triangle over in here, first things first, find the right angle. We want to know where this right angle is in the green. Where is it? S, R, or T? Where is it in the green? It's at T. T will be my right angle. Now, once again, I mean, one of the easy things that we can do is look at the right angle, T. Here it is. What's across from that? 16. Bless you. So 16 will be the hypotenuse of this. We just need to figure out which side's longer and which side's shorter. Well, if you're looking at this green triangle here, I think the longer side is clearly T to R. So T R will be my bottom side here. S will go at the top. So where does X go? Goes on T S. Now you can set up all three, and being able to dissect the diagram, being able to take your problem and break it down into separate parts, that's a key skill. But the easiest thing in the world when we're trying to solve for x is just take the left triangle, compare it back. We're trying to find x, right? What side does x correspond to? 16. We don't know QT, but we do know QS. It's 12. What side does 12 correspond to? 20. X over 16 is equal to 12 over 20. Cross multiply. 20X equals 16 times 12, 192. Then you just divide both sides 
by 20. I believe x should equal 9.6. Let's double check that. 192 divided by 20, 9.6. So how could this possibly be useful? Depends on if you're actually curious about the size of your house. Check this out. So we actually have this real world example here. It's kind of odd, I know. But I want to do this because it's, it's neat. It's a different kind of example and I like working with it. A roof has a cross section that is a right triangle. The diagram shows the approximate dimensions of this cross section. Find the height h of the roof. So instead of trying to find x, we're now trying to find h. And h is right here. Well, if it were me doing this, and I am doing this with you, I would do the same first step. Let's redraw our triangles real quick. I've got the big triangle in red. It's going to look something like this. Not exactly like that. Let's see. Ooh, better. You've got the big red triangle, z, y, x. I know that this top side is 5.5, this right side is 3.1, and this other side is 6.3. If we've learned anything from what we've done today, we only need one other triangle. So I'll tell you what, let's cut the work short. Let's cheat a little. Let me just redraw this left triangle here. Now I still want to redraw it exactly like our previous triangle, despite the fact that I need more of an angle. And I'm going to put my right angle up here. Now my blue triangle is like this, but I want it to look like this. So I need to put my right angle up here. So where is my right angle in the blue? Is it at Z, Y, or is it W? w. It's at W. My right angle is at W. And now, of course, from W, I have a longer side and a shorter side. Where would I go to get the longer side? Z. To Z. So that means Z will go down here, and Y goes there. Bless you. And now all we have to do is bring over those values from my blue. Check this out. I don't know the length of ZW. 6.3 is the whole thing from Z to X, but we don't know ZW. I do know YW. YW is H, so YW, stick an H there. And then in the blue, we also know Z to Y, it's 5.5. Z to Y is 5.5 meters. And so now, we have our two similar triangles, and all we need to solve for h. I'm trying to solve for h, right? What side does h correspond to? Five. Nope. 3.1. And the only other side that we have to work with in the blue is the 5.5, which corresponds to what? 6.3, exactly. This is similar triangles from chapter 8. This is what we did last chapter, despite the fact it feels like it's been a while since we did that. It's still setting up proportions, and it's still solving. So cross-multiply. 6.3h is equal to 3.1 times 5.5. Seventeen point zero five, and then we just have to divide both sides by six point three. Two point seven. H is approximately two point seven meters. I'm going to get that out of there. 
that's how we can use similar right triangles to solve for x. Does anyone have any questions?